Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Events. Yes, camera's zoomed in. Got some small stuff to show you today. Just had a delivery from Hannant's. Um, saw this on the site and thought, let's get some of these from my enterprise when I eventually get around to it. So um, these are basically the trumpeter aircrafts, aircraft sets. I'm sure most of you have seen them before. But if you haven't, they are out there. You can get them. Little 1-200 scale aircraft. So we've got the F4, F4 Wildcats. We've got the SBD Dauntlesses. And we've got the TBD1 Devastators. It's like Devastator Centre around here this week, isn't it? Um, so basically, as you can see on here, you get five kits per box. They're very, very simple. Um, you can see you have your decal sheet on the side there and that's what you're getting for your decal placement and here you go there's your decal placement and color guides there's no mention of paint colors or anything I don't think and then that's your instructions in fact it's not a case where I don't think there are no mentions of colors so there you go so there's your um there's your assembly guide and there's your sprue call out so it's all there on the box and in here you get basically you get five of each these are individually bagged so they're basically the same kit that you get in the aircraft carrier so if you get Yorktown or Enterprise you will get these three aircraft in the box um, and I think you get five of each or three of each I think it's five of each in the kit from memory but certainly when you buy these you get five of each and they're made in clear plastic so that they can make sort of one sprue and have the cow the, um, the cowling the uh, canopy there molded in clear so they are very very nice you can see you've got the individual undercarriage legs there which are very nice. They have surface. Let's have a let's have a look at one actually. Let's get one open, um, and you can see here we've got you've got surface detail, top and bottom, um, which is which is very nice. It's overdone. Yes, of course it is. At this scale, there wouldn't be anything at all. But if they just left them smooth, people would say there's no surface detail, so they can't really win, can they? And you've got some nice engine detail in there. You know, further sides, you've got a plastic propeller there, which is very nicely moulded and a uh, little clear canopy. So, yeah, just paint the um, paint the inside of that area there green or whatever. Paint the top black if you want to do a later aircraft. And um, in fact, I don't think the Wildcats were used when the, by the time they change over to black. And then you've got your undercarriage legs there, as I say, separate little tail wheel there. So very, very nice little models, which are very, very small. So if you are really stuck for space... Um, and you can't get an Enterprise or a Yorktown or anything like that, but you just want to build the air wing, then here you go. I mean, you can have a you could have a complete aircraft carrier full, um, you know, and, and, and keep it on the three map probably. So that's the F four F, and they got the SBD and the TBD are the same. Um, I don't think any of them come with folded wing options. No, the, all the wings are made in one piece. So you don't have any folded wings. In fact, this one's got a photo etch as well. So I'm assuming that's gear doors and arrestor hooks there. So, yes, PE1 is the arrestor hook. Oh, you've got an antenna as well. You've got the uh, the antenna, which is so prominent on the SPD sitting there in front of the canopy. Um, and I'm assuming these bits here are gear doors. Yes, they are. They're the, they're the gear doors. So very, very nicely done indeed. Again, as you can see, no folding wings, but you've got the fuselage there, you've got the canopy here, all very nice, beautifully done. They're about, from memory, I think they were about six or seven pounds a set, um, so not bad at all when you consider you're getting five little aircraft. So, you know, if, if you enjoy doing small stuff, then you could go and fill your boots. But if you really want to make these sing, Get yourself one of these. <laughs> this is the KA models, Mark 1 design, whatever you want to call them. This is the aftermarket set for the aircraft. So it's a US deck plane set and it's not just aircraft, as we'll see in a minute. Um, as you can see, and you've got four types, 25 pieces of turn metal parts. We've got one pre-painted colour etch fret. We've got two detailed photo etch frets. We've got nine resin parts and 150 3D printed parts. It's very, very nice indeed. And I would just like to say, before we go any further, if you saw my recent review on Scharnhorst, I had some damage on one of the frets. And after the video, I looked again, and there was more damage than I saw in the video. You may well have spotted it, but there was actually some bent stuff as well. 
it basically looked like it had been lent on in the heat or something. Um, I don't know, but uh, it's it's strange because I've got this now. I've got Scharnhorst. I've got the Mark One Design Trumpet um, Titanic. I've got the Mark One Design. Um, which other one have I got? The Enterprise, obviously, and none of them have any damage whatsoever. But that Scharnhorst one does. So, yeah, quite um, quite disappointing. Got in touch with Hannans. Hannans had also never had a complaint either with KA Design. Well, the guy I spoke to hadn't. They got in touch with KA Design, Mark One Design. And Mark One Design have come back to me and said they're sending me a replacement fret. So fantastic customer service there from, from both Hannance and from Mark One Design. So thank you very much, AD at Hannance. And also to, um, I can't remember his name now, <laughs> at, um, at uh, Mark One Design. So, um, yeah, brilliant. Really, really, really good customer service. So really happy there. So let's have a look in here. This is not just aircraft. Um, this is... From what I can see, I've had a quick look, because it doesn't say anywhere here how many aircraft it will do, and it's certainly going to be more than what they're showing you on there. So I've had a quick look, and I can't really figure out. It looks like you could do sort of a couple with folded wings, and then more with some detail, and then more with, that, with, more, with more detail. So you could have some with just a few photo etch bits, some with photo etch bits, 3D printed parts, and folded wings, and then some with just 3D printed parts or whatever. So um, we'll have a good look anyway. But um, again, I got this from Hannans. Um, great little, uh, great little set this is. Um, I saw Kenneth uh, over at Norwegian Scale Modelers Bench, um, or Norwe Norwegian Modeling Bench. He uh, reviewed it, and he's actually built it as well. He's done a beautiful job. So go take a look at his channel and have a look. Um, you can see we've got two bags there of uh, 3D printed parts. Nothing is damaged. We've got some turn metal brass. We've got some turn brass there. We've got some resin molded parts. We have instructions there, and then we've got, as it says on the front, we have three frets of photo etch. So as usual with my reviews, first thing we'll do is have a look at the instructions. If I look at this one first. Okay, so <clears throat> here we've got our instructions. Um, if you are new to this kind of thing, this is a typical uh, Mark One Design KA models instruction sheet. Uh, this isn't like an Airfix kit. This isn't sort of step one. You know glue the seat to the bulkhead step two glue the bulkhead to the floor this is it's just a display of assembly and you have to work out your own sequence it's this is obviously very simple but when you've got you know many hundreds even over a thousand parts in an aftermarket set you, you really need to work out so sit down familiarize yourself make sure you understand what's going on before you start to do anything just make sure you know what you're doing so as with most kits, you've got your, across the top, you've got your legend, which is your symbols about cutting and optional parts and times two and everything. Um, here you've got your, your call out. So this is your 3D printed fret here. And then here you've got the, marked in red is the basic part. More about that in a minute. We've got another little um, 3D printed fret there. We've got some molded resin pieces here and our turn brass parts there. So we can go through and check we've got everything. They don't show you the photo etch frets because it tells you on the front, you can go through the instructions, you can see there's three sheets, whatever, as long as there's three sheets in there, that's fine. Um, but always go through these sets and, you know, check that everything's good and check that everything's fine. And as I say, if you contact the supplier, they will always help you out get those parts replaced. Um, so basically going through the instructions here, we've got these, this trolley type thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is. If you know in the comments, please tell me. But it's got photo etch wheels, and so it's got, they're going to be very, very thin, like washers. And it's just basically a simple little trolley. Not sure what it's for. It might be just a general use trolley for pulling things around. And then here, we're underneath, we've got another thing, which I don't know what it is. It's a three-wheeled affair with like a handle on the front. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I've looked online, and I can't find any images of it in real life. But um, I'm assuming it's something to do with moving aircraft around or something. Um, or maybe it's for putting the bombs up on the right. I don't know. But uh, if you know, please tell me. I'm not sure what that is. I'll give you a close up so you can see what it is. And then perhaps you could tell me what it is. And then down here, we've got the bomb trolley being folded up here. This is for carrying two 500 pound bombs. Um, and then you can see there, there's an image of it made up with the bombs absolutely fitted on it. And then down here, we've got the torpedo trolley. And this is capable of carrying two torpedoes. So now we've got the 3D printed wheels rather than the the um, 
just the photo etched, you know, thin little slithers. So that's going to look very, very nice. And you can see it made up here with the torpedoes on it. Um, we've got torpedoes over here, which are obviously turned brass. And then you've got photo etched propellers and, um, and fins on there. And then you've also got photo etched parts on the back of the turned brass 500 pound bombs. And you've got five of each of those. So you might want to put some on the trolleys, perhaps put a couple on the aircraft, you know, um, you can do whatever you want. There's no set rule. And then here we've got wheel chocks, which are made in pre pre colored brass photo etch. So you could just fold them up. So that's that. So going over the page here, we've got the forklift, which is 3D printed. We'll have a look at that in a minute. You've got wheels going on there as well. And then we've got some photo etch bits and pieces. Looks like we've got a photo etch instrument panel going in. Um, whatever that little handle there is, I don't know. We've got a steering wheel and a steering column as well. So that's going to look really, really nice painted up and everything. Have that in your um, hangar deck close to the door. Or if you've got Hornet, you could do it in the crashed, in the, uh, crashed, in the sunk. And as you can see, if you look on YouTube, you'll see there's a video and there's one of these sat up against the chain on an open hangar door. It's amazing. And it looks like it was put there yesterday. It looks like you could get in there, start it up and drive it away. And it's been there for 80 years. It's incredible. Um, and then here we've got the Jeep. Yep, they used Jeeps on uh, World War II carriers. And uh, they also had like, I don't know if you've ever seen one. They also had one with a single rear wheel. They sort of cut, the, cut it off halfway across and then sort of brought it down to a single rear wheel. And uh, but they were very, very handy for move, moving stuff around on the carrier because it was quite big. Remember the carrier deck? It was a good old distance front to back. And then here, believe it or not, for those kits I just showed you, we have cockpit interiors. Now, again, you know, if you've got Edward, it will show you where on the kit part to cut and everything to fit the parts in. This doesn't do that. It just gives you the cockpit interior. In fact, they don't even show you the cockpit interior fitted other than an image like this one here with an arrow pointing to it. So... You've got your Wildcat cockpits there and you have this. Yes, you have a photo etch instrument panel. You have your Dauntless cockpits here. And yes, you have a photo etched instrument panel and you have your Devastator cockpits there. And yes, you have a photo etched instrument panel. So really quite amazing to see. Um, so this is the F4F Wildcat. So you can see we've got 3D printed undercarriage, which is far better detailed than the kit parts. We have a 3D printed canopy framing, which I feel is a little overdone. It looks a little too heavy, although I've never seen one built and painted. I'll have to go and look at Kenneth's, um, Kenneth's website. If you look at it, as I said earlier, go and have a look at his over on uh, Norwegian Scale Model. You'll see it all built up. Um, and then here we've got drop tanks going on. And I've looked at the 3D printed parts. And from what I can see, you've got enough in there to do sort of five aircraft. But you've only got enough to do three folded wings, obviously. You've only got three sets. So you, but you've got six propellers. So you sort of mix and match and, and make up what you want um, and go from there. You've got enough photo etch parts to have um, five folded wings. So you may want to convert some yourself and just cut the kit parts instead of using the resin parts. But again, you see they're doing the folded wings here. They're not showing you where to cut the wings. You've got to work that out yourself. So just, you know, just be careful. You've also got a turn brass spinner there for the propeller. It didn't have a spinner, did it? Just a turn, turn brass part going on the front. Um, and obviously you've got your photo etch inserts there going in the wings. So very, very nice indeed. And you can see there, I'll give you a close up. You can see they look lovely with all their additional undercarriage parts and everything all sitting down below. And then going over the, onto the next page, we have our Devastator. This is single sided. So hopefully you'll get too much glossiness here. So we've got our Devastator and you can see here they've got a photo etched antenna, which is probably a bit too thick. You know, you might want to replace that with some easy line or something. We've got, um, I'm assuming that's a pitot tube there coming out of the wing in photo etch. We've got the photo etch propeller. Again, we've got the turn brass center. We've got a turn brass torpedo. As I say, you only get five torpedoes. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so you might want to put two on a trolley and have three aircraft armed up and have the other un unarmed or being armed or whatever. Um, you can also fold the wings on the Devastators, but you have to cut them. You have to cut the wings yourself and then put those photo etch parts in. Again, it's not telling you where to cut them. You need to do your research and work that out. Although looking at this, it's quite obvious where the cut is. Um, you've got, again, we've got 3D printed undercarriage parts. So they're going to look very, very nice, much better than the kit parts. And then coming down here, we have our Dauntless. Again, we've got 3D printed canopy. Oh, here you have 3D printed canopy parts open 
and closed. So wing folded, closed up, that could be like in stowage. This one here is all open, ready to go. Absolutely amazing. Um, you can imagine how good these things are going to look. They're so small, they're going to look lovely. And then you've got your Dauntless here with all your dive brakes and everything in photo etch, as you can see. So you can have them all deployed and you've got interior detail on them as well, believe it or not. We'll see that in a second. We've got the spinner, we've got the propeller. Again, we've got the propeller on the Devastator as well. And then we've got the bomb with the slinging mechanism. Um, and again, we've got an antenna on there, which is probably a bit over the top for uh, for this scale. But, um, you know, you could use the antenna masts and then use a piece of easy line and don't forget you get photo etch antenna for the Dauntless anyway in the in the kit and you also have photo etch doors which they've replaced they've got photo etch doors on here as well so um so there you go you'll have an abundance of uh one two hundredth Dauntless doors if you get this uh, and you can see we've got the pre-coloured arrestor hook there we've got an arrestor hook there which is pre-coloured did we get one on the wildcat I, I should imagine we did uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I can't see any mention of it, but there's, it doesn't look like there's anything there. I can't see any mention of it, but I'm not sure that we can have a look. So uh, there we go. So that's basically the instructions. So you can imagine in this tiny scale, this is all going to look lovely. So we'll have a look at this 3D printed resin first. So this one here is the forklift. So we can have a look at this and see it is stunning see that there it's absolutely gorgeous you've got the seat detail in there you've got the forks on the front of the forklift they've come down to a point just as they would in real life and then you've got the, the vertical up right there absolutely gorgeous isn't it very very nice indeed you've got the axles in there as well this will take some very careful cutting. Um, I've had an email from a guy today. I, I said in another video I did about people make a lot of fuss about cutting these off. I wasn't sort of, because I've had a couple of people contact me about it actually. I wasn't pointing the finger at anyone. I wasn't accusing any of you of making a fuss. It was just a, a term I use and I, I, I do sometimes misuse terms. Um, when I said make a fuss, it's talked about a lot. Uh, even to the extent, if you go to airscale.co.uk, um, Airscale Peter has made a complete video on his website of how to do it. Um, you can use an ultrasonic knife. You can indeed, you can come in with cutters. You can just use a knife. Um, all you need to do is just concentrate on separating the tiny little point there. You've got that tiny little contact point there. As long as you cut below that, leave a little bit on the model, then just break the rest away and sort of work your way in. And think about how you're doing it. Obviously, with this, you wouldn't go cutting away all of this around here and leave the whole thing suspended by these forks. You'd probably do those forks first because you don't want to go, um, you know, leaving the model hanging on them because it's likely to snap them off. But uh, and also, as far as cleaning and, and priming and everything goes, I would suggest <clears throat> um, cut a bit of the fret off or something, you know, cut a piece of this off here or something and then leave it to soak for a couple of hours in some IPA, see if it's affected, see if it makes it go soft or anything. If it doesn't, then you know you're, okay, you're safe to wash your parts. Because when they do the 3D printing process, I know nothing about it, but I believe they have to wash the parts afterwards in a chemical to remove the residuals from the 3D printing process. And quite often in mass production, it's not done well enough and you, you tend to get this, this deposit left on the surface. So make sure you give them a good wash and as for primers um the only resin primer i know of is mr hobby uh and there is it is called do, 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 i've actually got it here it is mr resin primer surfacer um so basically it's a special primer that's designed for resin um i don't really know how effective it is I find all these, I, I can't find an etch primer that actually works, <laughs> but uh, you know, you, you pay your money, takes your choice. A lot of people swear by Steinol Res, which is basically this stuff, MIG one shot, uh, you can use the UMP stuff, anything that says made in USA, like that or not anything, but any primer that says made in USA 
is generally going to be Steinle res. And I'm led to believe that stuff is very good for resins and vinyls and stuff. So anyway, enough of that. It's a review about this set. So that is absolutely gorgeous. You've got the little frame over his head. You've got the seat in there. And then we've got the photo etched steering column's going to go in and the photo etched steering wheel going to sit on there. So that's going to be a mega, mega little model on its own. So we'll put it away in its bag. I'm amazed, I must be honest, that when I had that damage on my Scharnhorst, as I say, I've got no other damage on any other Mark 1 stuff I've got. And I'm amazed it doesn't get damaged, to be honest, when it's just sat in these bags. Um, moving on to our major fret. This is the most the most emphasized part of the kit, I mean, that's the word I'm looking for perhaps. This is the most important part of the set. I think this is where all your money's going. Um, this was £70 by the way, which probably does sound a lot for what it is. But, you know, it's kind of, there's a lot of work gone into this. I can feel already this is very sticky. So it obviously needs cleaning with something. So what you could do, you could cut part of this block here away check that in your IPA and see if it affects it. But we can see on here basically this has been really well designed it's in sort of strips you can see it's all made in strips so it can easily be snapped away and you've got some residue there from where it was made on the base. Um, now then we can look on here and we can see right we're going from this end so on this end we've got our wildcat cockpits we can see how gorgeous they are uh, you've got the seat in there, you've got the control column, I don't know if you can even make it out there, but you've got a control column, you'll have a flat instrument panel where you put the photo etch part on, uh, and you've got the seat and everything, and then you've got the headrest, the bulkhead coming up the back. Um, do the seats have harnesses on them? Let's have a look, let me use my little magnifier. No, there are no harnesses on there, but the, the control column is there for sure. So, I mean, you could just... I don't know if you want to go mad and have harnesses, you could probably put a hair in there or something. Get some blonde hair pieces, I don't know. Um, get a white hair of your dog, something like that. Uh, and then we've got some wheels there for something or other. This is very sticky. And then here you have five lots of, these are the undercarriage. This is the undercarriage here, you can see, which is very nicely done. And then you've got some canopies here uh, are they going to be for the wildcats okay so we've got open and closed so you can see how much bigger the open canopy is than the closed one because it's got to slide back over the fuselage and this is always a problem with plastic models um, the canopy is always if you want to have it sliding something's got to be out of scale so there we go very nice which is where Tammy have really gone to town with the 30 second scale Corsair rather than have a big bulbous canopy they've sort of reduce the size of the fuselage and increase the size of the canopy so it's, it's neither of them look really out of scale but you you do get that nice effect so we've got some more wheels there so um i'm not sure if those wheels they look a bit big i'm not sure they're going to be for the wildcat and then here we have undercarriage legs i'm assuming that's going to be for our dauntless oh we have guns here as well we have the twin machine guns for the dauntless you can see there, they're absolutely gorgeous going along there. And then we have the drop tanks, the Wildcats, more wheels there. So I assume they are Wildcat wheels. They look quite big. And then here we have Dauntless cockpits. Um, very, very nice indeed. You can see down in there, we have the seats, you have the gun mount. All very beautifully done. Really, really nice. And then we've got closed canopies there for the Dauntless yeah it must be for the Dauntless looks like we perhaps don't have open canopy provision for the for the Dauntless yes we do that's open canopy that's weird I'm obviously missing something here that's Oh, okay, this is the open for the Dauntless. So you've got three open and three closed. Okay, and then the Devastator, you've got three open and three closed. So you're going to have to have some closed. And then here you've got the single machine gun. And you've got undercarriage legs there. That's probably... That's probably Devastator and that's Dauntless. 
So there we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've got twelve pairs of undercarriage legs there. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six pairs for the Dauntless. So here we've got the Devastator cockpits. So you can tell the Devastator cockpit because it's got three positions. So we've got five of them. So they're very... <laughs> I mean, it's just, the detail is crazy. I do believe... I'm not seeing things. That's got a control column and rudder pedals in there. So uh, quite incredible. And then over here, being very careful not to drop this. Over here we've got the Jeep. We've got a piece of resin on, stuck on the back there, which just needs to come off. You can see there we've got the Jeep with the beautiful front bumper. And you've got the spare wheel on the back and the jerry can. So I'm not sure they've had a jerry can on it on deck, but uh, hey ho. Um, very nice indeed. Now this part here is part of the reason I convinced myself this set was worth the money. This here is what's marked in red on the instructions. You can see on the instructions it has this area here marked in red, i.e. not used. Unless you have Yorktown, because basically these parts here are rudders propellers and vent tubes for the ship's boats. Now, as we all know, the kit for the, the Yorktown series of aircraft, aircraft carriers that Trumpeter do, Merit, whatever, the ship's boats are bloody awful. So if you get the Mark I design set for Enterprise, you get resin boats. So what I've done, because some of the boats had faults in them, uh, they had bubbles and broken parts, uh, just just being very, very fussy, tiny little broken edges on them. I've made a mould of each one and I've made myself a set of bolts because I've got Yorktown and Enterprise, uh, which is how I convinced myself to get the Mark I design set and the Pontos set for Enterprise, because what you can do is use both sets, the best of them for Enterprise, and then use what's left over for Yorktown. So here we have all the resin parts to enhance the, bo the boats for Yorktown as well as Enterprise. So uh, that's how I convinced myself this was worth it. But so uh, you can see those little propellers on there and the rudders and the tubes are absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, so um, all in all, lots and lots of beautiful 3D printed resin. And as I say, it's extremely sticky. I need to um, check that IPA is not gonna affect it. So that can go over there, right. Um, so over here, staying with resin parts, we have the wings. We have here the folded wings. There we go. So we have three centre sections. Um, and these are for the Wildcats, I believe. Yes. No, these are... are these for the... No. These are for the Wildcats, so these wings are for the Wildcats. That section there Do you know, I don't know what that's for. It looks very dauntless like to me, but they're not actually, they're called out here, CBO3. Okay, I've got it. Um, what's confused me is normally what Mark One Design do, as you can see, all their resin parts are coloured pink. CBO3 is the wing centre section, so it saves you having to cut your parts. So you're not going to have to cut your kit parts to have the folded wings on the Wildcat, at least. That's going to go in between the fuselage halves, and that's going to fit on the outside of it as your folded wing section. So you don't have to actually cut your kit parts. So. There we go, so that's what they are. So you can see you've got the wings there with the well overdone surface detail, but it's gonna look make it look a lot more interesting than if it was all just flat. So that's all very nice. And then we have turn brass parts. And on here, we will have a couple of different parts per, so you can see there we've got one, two, or however many we've got. Okay, so with these you have, there are two parts 
on each one. So if I just grab that little spinner on the end there, you can see you have a spinner there for your Dauntless, I believe. Yes. And then back here, you have just the hub for the um, for the Devastators and the Wildcats. And I don't know if you can make this out, but that's the part that goes back into the aircraft. And then this is the hub for the propeller. And then this little bit on here is like the, the sort of nose that sticks out. I think this is all a bit too thick here, to be honest. You may be better off just using a piece of brass or something. But um, it does look rather clumsy on the aircraft. I don't know if you can make that out there. But it does look like it's you know, sticking out a lot. It does look quite clumsy. It looks very nice on the Dauntless. Um, and the one on the Wildcat is going to look clumsy too, I should think. Have a look. Yeah, you can see it there. It looks very clumsy sticking out a long way. So there we go. But um, they're there in the set, so you've got them. I'll leave all them out because in a minute I'll go through and count them and check that everything's here. And then here we have our... I don't need to get these out. These are our bombs and our torpedoes. In fact, I will get them out because we'll look at the surface finish. It's something Jason often comments about is the... The surface finish of Mark 1 parts compared to Pontos and it is very nice it does have a very nice surface finish for surface finish to it it's not at all um liney like the court you know the tips blunt or the feed rates too fast or whatever so there's your torpedoes you get five of those and then we've got these little 500 pound bombs as well which are very nice indeed really lovely so they're cool um as I say, I mean, you could have a little, you, because in the Mark One design set for Enterprise, you actually get 200 scale figures as well. So you could almost have like a little live diorama going on. You could have a, a model on a stand, but the actual model could be a diorama in itself. You could have men pushing the trolleys around with the bombs and torpedoes on or whatever. So there you go. And then here we have our photo etched fret. So let's go to colour one first. So this is obviously propellers. So we can see here we've got loads of wheel chocks. We've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what's that? Uh, 36 wheel chocks, which is nice. And they just fold them up. They're yellow. They're painted yellow already. Um, we have arrestor hooks for the Dauntless and the Devastators. We have no arrestor hooks for the, um, for the Wildcats. But this is what I mean, it's hard to work out what you actually do get in the set because you can see here, we have eight instrument panels there, we have eight instrument panels there, and we have eight instrument panels here. We have two Jeep instrument panels. Quite why that's black, I do not know. And then we have six of each propeller. And then we've got um, ten of each arrestor hooks. So, you know, you don't just have to super detail, super detail what's in the kit. You can actually super detail um, your other aircraft as well and I have just noticed on her I don't know if you can see it but it's actually printed out of register if you look on the edge of the propellers here you can see a shiny line you can see on the edge of these instrument panels there's a shiny area that, just go around with a black pen that'll sort that out because you want to color the edges in anyway but uh, I don't know if you can see that there but it is actually out of register so never mind and the propellers are actually printed on the back side as well, so that's pretty cool. Very nicely done, and they've got the tricolor, or sorry, the, the double color um, tips as well, though. Look. So very nice, very nice indeed. So that's your painted fret, and then we've got these other two frets here, which are so we've got trolleys here. We've got two of each of those trolleys, whatever that thing there is. Um, we've got all our wheels there for our trolleys. I think they probably would look better in, maybe just put a piece of plastic car on them, just to fatten them up a bit. I think they're going to look a bit too skinny in Photo Etch. You've got your wing folds there, so you can see it's Photo Etch brass, so you're going to fold it and then glue the wing on, and that's going to be strong enough to support the wing as long as you don't touch it. Um, we've got tail wheels by the look of it there uh, we've got the, the um, instrument panel for our truck there for our um, forklift uh, other bits and pieces there we've got the antenna for the aircraft there's your folded wing details for the wildcat as you can see you've got 
enough there for five aircraft. In fact, you've got enough there for ten aircraft. Um, but you only have enough folded wings for three. So it's, you know, you, you sort of pay your money, takes your choice what you do, really. Not exactly sure what those bits there are, I can't remember from the instructions. But uh, as you can see, it's all there. You can see we've got some steering wheels going on as well. So this you can have a lot of little, lots of little bits and pieces. Um, yes, yeah, see, this, this is the deck plane and vehicle set. So they haven't included any of this in the Enterprise set. So this isn't adding to the Enterprise set. You know, it's 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 not um, sort of giving you the opportunity to do more aircraft. This is your opportunity to do the aircraft. There, there's nothing in the set for the aircraft. And then when you look at the Pontos set, you get everything for the aircraft, but you get nothing for the ship's boats. So it's it's almost like they work together, um, which is why I bought both sets. Now here we have more detail. So we have this is our torpedo trolley here. You only get one of those. Uh, we've got the the little propellers there for the back of the 500 pound bombs. There's the bomb racks. Um, there are more propellers for bombs, and you've got the fins for the bombs, fins for the torpedoes, you've got the slings for the bombs there, gear doors, antenna. Um, there's another part of a trolley there. You've got the Jeep windscreen, looking very, very nice. And then over here you have the dive brakes for the Dauntlesses. And you can see on there we have internal details. So the, the outside is going to be flat. And then the inside, the red bits are going to be all, you've got all the ribbing on, there's the centre dive brake there, and then you've got the wing dive brakes there. Very, very nice indeed. You can imagine, it's good. if you just paint it up and give it a very, very light wash, everything's going to pop, it's going to look great. And as I say, if you want to see this all used, built, head on over to Kenneth's channel, Norwegian Scale Modeler, and, uh, or Norwegian Modeling Bench, sorry. And... Um, you can see it all over there. He's done a beautiful job of it all. So there we go, guys. That is that set. Um, the part number is MS20018. When I ordered this, there was only one left at Hannant's. So you might want to go and snap that one up. Or you can get it directly from uh, Korea. It's $70 in Korea. £70 over here. Um, frankly, by the time you've paid for it, paid the postage and possibly had to pay the customs and everything, you may as well just buy it from Hannans. Um, because, it, you know, it's going to be it's 70 US dollars, which is, what's that, 58, 60 quid. Um, you know, and then by the time you've paid the postage and everything, you may as well just go and get it from Hannans. And uh, if you build the order up to over £100 with Hannans, you get free postage anyway. So there we go. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon. Any questions about this, anything else you want to see in more detail, just pop them in the comments down below. Please give us a like. If you haven't liked this, give us a thumbs down. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.